So the episode opens with Mean Mia and her coo getting ready to head to Chesapeake. Mia got that rat face thing going on like Maya, those, those real keen features. Well, hers aren't so much keen as plastic. Mia man letting her know from jump, I am going with you because you are on this show as support. I am going with you so you are not lacking Brian, like Gabris and Gabrissi. But I am not going to have fun. I don't know these people and I don't want to know these people. You see, Juan just tells Rob Dixon, toodaloo. I don't even think he'll give her the ooh at the end. I think it's just toot. A very dry bye. You know how dry Juan is. It would be a bye. And Gabrissi, this is what she hears. Of course not. Oh, he said, you know, when I get out, I can be extra. So you're admitting to your Penelope Thomas Bailey. Well, at least you're self-aware. Girl, why you got to talk about Candace's low budget video set? You knew it was going to be low budget. Honey, the show was low budget. You're low budget. I ain't gonna say nothing about your mom and her struggles. You, dear, are low budget. Your makeup is low budget. Your lies about being a stripper are low budget. Child, they were so low budget, nobody bought them. That's low budget. I mean, this is, you know, a heifer trying to get her name out there so she can get her Instagram sponsorships up. Ain't nobody buying this music. Girl, boom. And have you been to a music video set? A lot of them are low budget. And with lighting and editing, you make it look high budget. Do you really think it's how it looks on TV? It ain't. I mean, you want to talk about, I don't want to show up to something low budget, but we're at Gabrice and Gabrissi's hovel in a tent out back. That's low budget. Let's talk about that if we're going to talk about low budget. But now with Candace and her coot, Candace, I'm going to need you to stop chastising this man for drinking on camera. You're making it look like he has a drinking problem. I mean, you've said that twice now. Don't say that on camera. That's something you say when the mic is off. Because that's, you know, between couples, but you painting it like he got a drinking problem. And Bravo is putting it in at every chance they get. Oh, Candace is still trying to get a label. Honey, just go independent. You, you don't need a label. You got YouTube and you got your little Instagram. Do it like Melody do it. Melody ain't trying to get no damn deal. You're not a deal artist. All E1 is going to do is take a percentage of the five cents you was getting. A distribution deal, you, you just put it on Spotify. Like, you, you can do all of this yourself now. Nobody's going into the store to buy your album. This is not coming out on vinyl. Beyonce don't even sell CDs no more. And she could actually sell some. Not as many as before, but more than you. Candace gonna say, oh, I'm low budget? Really, Miss Leaky Booty, Leaky Lip? I'm not intimidated by a size 14 foot. Okay, Candace, you got your little primer out. You're reading at a fifth grade level. But Candace, you are intimidated because it took your mama to get you on this show. And you know if you had a mama like her, where would you be? Your mama has picked you up and carried you across the finish line your entire life. So you are intimidated, and you couldn't even marry Rich. All that time being in Jack and Jill and debutante, and all of the black men with money that you've met, none of them wanted you. And you ended up with this coot. You said, I can't get a brown man, at least I can get a brown penis. Chris and Candace are only eight years apart. That's the definition of city miles versus highway miles. Now we've got Ashley bringing her baby over to Rob Dixon's. You know, I realize Rob should probably ask Ashley how to get her motivation back because Ashley just dealt with postpartum depression and now Rob's dealing with the depression, so maybe she could give her some tips. Because I'm like, Ashley seems much better this season after the second baby because that first one threw her for a loop. Did you feel it? I felt it. So Rob says she should be in her new house within two months, but how long until they foreclose? Well, actually, you should be good because this is the house that your cap's built, right? This is your cap money. Girl, if it wasn't for Monique walking out on this show, this would be a stalled construction project, much like Gabrice and Gabrissi's. Rob, Wendy is not the asshole. You're an idiot. And every time you open your mouth, it's in blind defense of Gabrice and Gabrissi, and it's completely disrespecting and disregarding Wendy's feelings. And you're also butting in because you and Wendy ain't got nothing going on. Other than the fact that she said your relationship isn't worth a plug nickel. And it ain't. Gabrice, 
Can you please, if you can't finish your house, where is the money going? Can you not buy a new wig? Because, girl, that's the same wig your sissy said looked like coochie hair two seasons ago. But I digress. She sends a little text to everybody saying she ain't going on the trip because she felt the invitate was rude. You ain't going on the trip because you ain't got nobody's man. Even your sissy won't stay with you. Over at Wendy and Eddie's, and by over I mean all the way over two hours outside Potomac, Eddie asked the quintessential question that all black people ask before they head off on a trip to a party or a family reunion. Who all's coming? Wendy said, I don't know, I mean, Gabrissi dropped out because, well, she's manless and she knows we'll be poking at her, poking at her all weekend long like she pokes at everybody all season long. So get your jabs in. If it's good for the goose, it's good for Gabrissi. It looks like Rob isn't going either because Rob knew Juan wasn't going. The husbandless are staying home. Ashley going, but she like, please, I've got prenups on prenups. Me and my man are good. Y'all like to swing together anyway. Rob Dixon just said, I can't speak my mind. That would be a very short sentence, Rob. A very short sentence, speaking your mind. <laughs> my goodness. What do you think it would sound like? Her speaking her mind. I I'm getting a static T. I'm getting maybe like a <laughs> When I think about your mind, it reminds me of Gabrice and Gabrissi's house, a mess. So Ashley is begging Rob to come for her so she won't be the only single Sally. Since we know, is Gabrice coming? Of course not. I guaranteed you Jamal would go if he knew she wouldn't be there. So now we're with Karen and Ray waiting for Ashley to show up. Ray gonna come down tomorrow and Ray's asking, you know, who all's going? Michael? I don't think Michael's coming. Juan? I, I don't know. I don't know. Karen, this is the slickest shade you've ever thrown, getting your coot to cover for you. You better get on your candy, Burris. Karen said after Rob frigged her pussy on camera on the last trip, I don't think Juan's coming. She don't need a man when she's got master baby. Ray said he needs three or four weeks in advance to put it in his schedule. What do you have to do? Now, Wendy, I know you like Karen, but don't have the wind blowing off your wig like Karen. We, we've had enough wig shifts for the season. That wind gust came up. Wendy almost lost two full bundles. But now let's look at the property. Okay, I'm kind of liking this blue room, but you know me in a blue room. I'm gonna get a wall decal for this. Me and her coot pull up next and he walks out, valet, valet. Well, hopefully she's got somebody in here to help with the luggage because I ain't carrying shit. Now, if it wasn't COVID times, I could understand. But also, Mia, since you need a helper so bad, why couldn't you arrange for one? And where's your maid at home that was packing your bags and lifting them into the car? Since you expect that service here, you don't have it at home. You going on a vacation in a shared house and you think there's going to be maids? Butlers? On Potomac? In Chesapeake? They couldn't even get y'all two decent properties on a compound. It would have been nicer to stay at Monique's house, but <laughs> y'all ain't welcome there. So everybody says hi to each other and they all go to have some shots. Okay, did anybody else notice that Wendy has on Crystal's ugly leather pants? I'm just realizing that now. And they are ugly. I don't know when it's appropriate to wear those pants. Yes, I do. 93. But during the shots, Mia says, you know, my mom's watching my kids because we're trying to rebuild our relationship and lets Wendy know about her mama's issues. And Wendy's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And I guess Candace didn't know about Mia's mama issues. So everybody's like, ooh, Candace is going below the belt. Candace knew, and that's why Candace went below the belt. And Candace wants to justify it as, well, people go after my mama. Your mama's rich. She's just overbearing and mean. She could fix her problems, especially as a therapist. Mia's mama, those are issues that you don't make light of. Meanwhile, in the car with Karen and Ashley, she says, you know, I'm going to invite Giselle to the wedding because I want to do my part to move the group forward. I don't know, Giselle seems like she'd go down to New Orleans to bring some type of root to the food and put a hex on the event. I wouldn't trust her, not around my nuptials. Karen. Karen and Ray said, you know, we're going to tag team that ass. Ray said, I don't mind if she comes to the ceremony. I don't know who she's going to bring. Maybe that hairdresser. Ooh. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. That was right to the solar plexus. So they show Rob and Giselle at home. They ain't going nowhere. However, Candace and Chris are the next to arrive, and Mia's the one to greet them. And Candace is already like, uh, I gotta look at you. You really should save that emotion for your mama when she shows up at your house unannounced. Oh, Wendy wasn't wearing ugly leather pants. They were ugly leather shorts, but the waist was the same. And it was a waist of a waist. But Chris and Candace come in and we getting the shots flowing. And Zen Wen gets to telling them about GVO, good vibes only, that's the theme of the weekend. And so now Mia's coot brings up strip clubs and he says, I'm a connoisseur of strip clubs. Sounding just like an uncle that'll hit on your friends. Oh Lord, now Gordon lets it slip that they be going to the strip club to bring home thirds. And Mia says, well, Gordon likes white girls. And I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. Then he gonna say, where the white women at? Really? <laughs> Do you not remember what happened to Katie Roast? Okay, good, good luck. Good luck. I, I gotta watch Candyman, because that was very much a... Candace, you really gonna say, I don't care how hung your penis is, keep those things to yourself? But you let all of us know Chris has a brow penis. You hypocritical heifer. But here comes Alaska Rob's friend. I guess they really ready to move on without Rob. Your friends get more shine than you. So now we take a few more shots so everybody's a good four shots in and we head to the kitchen. Now we've been seeing whenever Mia says something, Candace agrees in a very passive aggressive fashion so there's already some tension between the two and soon they'll be salad. Now that's a suddenly salad commercial. So the whole group has been kind of off put by G. They're like, okay, you know, we could have sex talk, but are you on 10, 10? They're like, you need a water, you, you want a water? But now Mia's coot comes in and tell her, you get in a G-Wagon for our eighth anniversary. You get to customize it yourself. Ooh, that's nice. That's a good 150,000. Ooh, they said Mia's husband is giving them Ashley's coot vibes. A little hat and zay over satchel wall and make you uncomfortable. Being too handsy. Yeah, we don't need to hear where the white women at. So Candace, Alaska, and Wind are comparing coots. Oh, girl, he almost fell over on camera. He is drunk. He boo. He's like Jennifer drunk from Real Housewives of Jersey. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. If there was ever a time to zip that lip, it would be now. You can't say there's something wrong at home. It, you didn't like it when the girls said it about you, but now here you are putting that same shoe on with the shoehorn, honey. You're like, mm -hmm, oh no, if it fits, wear it. So when them heifers did that to you, you were not here for it. You better leave my marriage alone. But now you're going to say, oh, with Mia, there's something wrong in the home. Mm-mm. But now Mia wafts into the room, and they go on and ask her, did she tell you to shut the fuck up? And she said, probably. Ashley going to say, you can do that behind closed doors, but not in mixed company, because Chris knows better than to talk to me like that. Yeah, because Chris knows he'd get put out. Oh, God, Wendy, Wendy, why are you bringing up Mia's mama and then pointing out Candace's comment? Let Mia and Candace sort that out. You do not need to be in the middle of that. Now you done brought yourself in, and this was not the right time. Everyone is drunk as a skunk. If you want to have a clear-headed moment and a real apology, you can do that, but not during tipsy hours. Candace going to say, well, I was retaliating to what she said about my mom. And Mia said, look, I just asked her who was in charge because I'm a CEO, so I identify the problem. You weren't the CEO of this video shoot, so you should just stand there and be supportive and realize, okay, this is production, everything always on, on time. You're not stupid, Mia. You're willfully obtuse. Mia going to say, I admire your mom. One day I want to be like her. Candace said, well, she wasn't found in a strip club, but if you want to be like her, you can be like her. We don't need no more. 
Candace said, and then you called my video low budget. It is, and Mia's right, that's business, but it wasn't your business to say it. If you thought it was low budget, that would have been a cute little confessional read, but you could have kept it to yourself. But you had to make her video about you. Jeez, even Gabrice and Cabrissi only did that to Rob Dixon when she was trying to flip that house she was over budget and underwater on. Now, Alaska brings up a great point. Why are we talking about business? This is not a business retreat. We are friends trying to have a good time. Wendy's just like, oh my God. But Wendy, you brought this on yourself. This was a sunrise tea sober event. This was something you do after yoga, after healing, after a sound bath. This is when you work it out and suss it out. Candace said, I didn't invite you to my event to criticize it. Fair statement. But then you have to say you were found on the curb by a pimp. As factual as that may be, uh, where'd you get your husband from? Because it looks like you went to Home Depot to get your walls banged out, if you know what I mean. I mean, at least when Ashley worked in a restaurant and she married the owner, she married up. You couldn't even move laterally. Candace gonna tell Wendy, don't check on her. I came to her defense last time and her big foot butt won't defend me. God gave me these big feet. God gave you basic too. Candace, I'm sorry, you're the most basic of the bunch. At least Mia clawed her way to the penthouse. You had it handed to you and you still moved down several floors. So in the middle of a fight, Mia gets a call from her best friend and she's like, excuse me, I have to take this. Candace gonna say, you should excuse yourself with your flawed ass. And then Mia gone through the mean girl shade. Hi, honey. It's so good to talk to one of my rich friends and not these broke heifers. Candace gonna say, yes, your mother's a broke bitch. Do your night walk, night walker. Candace, you just every season, you don't know how to not paint yourself as the asshole, as the butt. Monique isn't here, but you gonna find somebody to start with. And heifer, you came in on the war path. Mia wasn't even starting with you. And if you want to tell me to get your dollars on the way down, then get your lunch money from your mama. However, after that, Ashley and Karen finally show up. Now it's room picking time, and Wendy says, okay, cottage crew gets their pick of the rooms first. Oh, so Ashley gets next because she a new mama, and then Mia gets to pick her room before Candace and Chris. Mm-hmm. See, Candace, you think these people like you, but they don't. Oh my goodness, so I'm last. So I'm like, ooh, I mean, your buttons are so easy to push. So Mia turns to Ashley and says, Candace is mean. Because you know who's gonna support that narrative more than Ashley. Candace gonna say, well, if you call me mean, you might as well invite me into the conversation. And hefts on over. Suddenly salad, suddenly salad. Who remembers suddenly salad? Candace said, let's address the real issue. The elephant in the room is you need to go to therapy. Honey, who, your mama? Your mom, you, you think your mama can help? Why don't you get your mama into therapy before you start diagnosing strangers? Uh-oh, Mia put a hand to the face when Candace got up in her face. This one tried to do that with me and that didn't work out. Wendy's like, good vibes only, good vibes only. They done ran the men outside. Candace said, you need counseling for classism. You just got here and you barely made it in, so watch your mouth. You really think you Queen B because Monique said, I'm not going to be your plot line anymore. And Candace, because you went through it with Monique and now Mia's wealth matters to you, I think you're the one that is upset you're not where they are rather than them lording their wealth over you. Candace, how are you going to tell her to walk out of the room? You don't control the room. This ain't even your trip. But you trip in. Where is your pimp? Where is your mama? So Mia says, okay, I'm going to go get my pimp. And she goes and gets her pimp. And they head upstairs. She's hungry. You need to feed her. And Candace throws a little lettuce at her and her husband. Well, her cooed. Mia said, you need to grow up. And I mean, Candace really, like, this proves you are the aggressor. But when somebody gets up in your face, it's an issue. Girl, you ain't grown since last season, and I know Monique is having a knee-slapping laugh. Because what you supposed to do with that? 
She's begging for whoop. She's begging for a whoop. She wants you to kick. She wants you to beat her ass. Your mother's low budget. Go cry about it in your room. When you start with me, you're gonna finish. I mean, this is truly trifling. And so Mia's like, you know what? I'm out of here and just throw some lettuce to Candace and moves on. And of course, Candace tries to throw it back. And that was the shot. 